So let's talk client contact forms and collecting customer data. Forms are a really important way of connecting, engaging and growing that following of your clients. With this in mind, it's really important that you have a clear way for your visitors to reach out and contact you. And we do this through forms on our website. Um, what we like to use and what we advise to a lot of our clients is using Forminator. Forminator is a super easy drag and drop uh, web building tool that helps you build forms for WordPress websites. It has lots of other added features like you can build quizzes, login forms, user registrations, and even polls for your website. It can also connect with PayPal and Stripe so that you can take payments through your Forminator. For those based in the UK and the EU, Forminator also has a GDPR checkbox, which means that when you're collecting your customer's data, you can be rest assured that you're being compliant. My favorite thing about Forminator is actually the honeypot feature. Um, and this works in a similar way as Google Recapture. It's an anti-spam bot feature that helps you reduce down bots from commenting and filling out your web forms on your website uh, so that you can rest assured that when you get a lead come through, you know that it's genuine. In this quick tutorial, we're gonna show you how to set up Forminator as well as connect it to a marketing campaign feature like MailChimp. So let's dive in. Okay, so we're in our back office now and let's look at how to set up Forminator. So we've already downloaded it, um, but I'll just show you in the plugins in case you haven't got it already. It's this one here. So once you've installed that and activated it, head over to the Forminator icon on the side. Now it'll ask you if you want to upgrade to a pro, but for the features that we're going to show you today, um, the free version will work fine. So let's create. And you'll have loads of different templates here. You can create login forms, user res registrations, uh, request a quote, it's quite useful as well. Uh, but we're just going to create a generic uh, contact us form. So click that, continue. And just name it contact us. Now you can see here, it's already pre-filled out quite a lot of the information that we'll need. Um, so uh, it will display, it will ask the client for their first name, their email address, their phone number, and then a quick message of why they want to get in touch. Um, but what I like to do is just tweak a few of these forms to make it look a little bit more professional. So if you click the settings and then edit field, we can actually change this to select multiple and uh, we can have first and last name. Uh, double check that it's required. So it's saying optional. So we obviously we want their first and last name. So you click required. And then uh, it will automatically force that they need to have their first name. And if you want them to have their last name as well, you can click required too. And then apply. Email address is fine. Phone number is also fine. Um, sometimes you might not need to uh, take a phone number. So I'll show you how to remove that on this form. So click the settings and then delete and delete again. And then finally, we're going to add GDPR. So if you click insert fields, GDPR, insert field. And then that'll have a little tick box that they have to tick to say that they, they agree to your privacy policy and your terms and conditions. Now, obviously, you will need um, to put those in yourself, um, but this will help you uh, make sure that your clients are agreeing to your GDPR. Click apply. And that's basically it. Um, as you can see, it's really quick and really easy. So let's preview. And this is how your form will look, uh, which looks okay. Um, there are a lot of other features that you can do with it. Um, what I like to do is add page breaks and this makes your form look a lot more manageable. So for example, if you had a form that was collecting a lot of data, like uh, you wanted a phone number, 
and maybe their address as well. Click insert fields and let's put these up here. So now when we come to preview, we can see that it's, it's a really long form. So to make this smaller, click insert fields and then page break. And we're going to put the page break just before the address. And we're going to duplicate that and have it before the message as well. So now when we preview, you can see we've got these different sections. So we fill out this bit. And as you can see there, it just breaks the form down into smaller sections. It just says it's not being published because uh, the form isn't live yet. But it just shows you how it, how it works. Now at the top here, we've got some text. Uh, we can either change that in here. Um, you can set up our labels, page one, page two, and finish. So we could put name, contact, address, and message. And that will break the form down. Um, we can't see it clearly because we're on preview mode here, but um, when you view it on your live site, you'll see the whole text appear. Um, and then as you, as you go through each page break, the dot will turn blue and the clients will see how they're progressing through the form. Or what I prefer to do on page breaks is actually hide it. Uh, so it's like this here, and it just looks a bit cleaner. So that's how to set up the, the form capture side of things. I'm just going to remove a lot of this stuff because we won't need it for our uh, final form. There we go. Uh, and now we're going to look at appearance. So here we can uh, change how the form looks. So uh, we can have it looking like that. So there's no border. Or we can have it looking like that. So it's a, an enhanced border. I quite like uh, this material one. Just looks very minimal, very clean. So I tend to go for that one when I'm building forms. And then we can change the color. Um, these are all the different sections. I only tend to really change the uh, submit button color. So you can just change it by clicking this. And uh, let's make it our company colors, so pink and orange. And the hover button is going to be in pink. And now when we preview, you can see here, the button has changed color. You can also change the font here. So the font is the same as your website, uh, but I always go for kind of a standard minimal font type. So I never really need to change this. And then next we're going to go to behavior. And this is just the message it displays when someone has filled out your form. So it says, thank you for contacting us. We'll be in touch shortly. But you can change this to thank you for contacting us. The pod team will be in touch shortly. The next thing I like to do is select autofill. It just makes it easier for clients to fill out your form. Um, and then this is my favorite feature here. This is the uh, honeypot feature and it just stops spot bots from spamming your website um, and it tries to determine whether they're human or not. So let's turn that on. Um, you can set up a, a, an expiration date for your forms. And I like to turn these on as well. It just helps uh, speed up your load times. Email notifications. So um, this will send an email notification directly to uh, the admin, but you can also add one for the user. So um, this is going to be client fills out form. So I'm just going to put the subject as form submission pod tech. So we're going to type in hi, and then you want to put this symbol 
and then name hyphen one, and then that symbol again. And what that will do is that will actually insert the person who's filling this form in's name into this section. I'm just going to put in a closing message there, and it says, thanks for filling out our form. A member of the PodTech team will be in touch shortly. Thanks from PodTech. Next, we want to tell it where this is going to go. So we want it to go to the person who's filled out the form. So if you click the add box here, you can see it's already filled in that email address for us. And you can add additional information here, like where, who the email's from. Um, so you could put your work email. Uh, this will put a default no reply email in a standard, so that's fine. But say, for example, we wanted them to be from our PodTech emails, we could just put thinkorangedesigns.co.uk, and you could put your name in there, Simon PodTech. And we don't need any conditions, so we click Add. And now whenever a client fills out a form, they'll receive an email notification to say that they filled out the form. And finally, we're going to show you how to connect your MailChimp. So for some reason, it won't allow you to uh, connect your MailChimp until you publish the form first. Um, so let's publish the form and click close. And let's click integrations there. Now we've got a, a huge list to, to scroll down from. Um, we've got things like campaign monitor, um, Slack, Google Sheets, but we're gonna show you how to install MailChimp. So connect app. And now it'll ask for your uh, API key. Now, if you don't know where to find it, that's not a problem. You just click this button here and it will ask you to log in um, but I've already logged into my MailChimp in advance. So log in first. Um, if it then doesn't take you to the correct page you need, just go back once you're logged in and click here again. I've blanked this out so that my API key remains anonymous, but there'll be a long alphanumeric number here. So just copy that. Come back into your configure for MailChimp and paste the key in there and click connect. So that's MailChimp configured. Um, so let's go back to the form. So head back to dashboard and the contact us form here. We're going to go there and edit. And now let's integrate MailChimp. So cl click MailChimp here and activate. You can also set up your audiences in MailChimp. Uh, we, do, we do show you how to do that in one of our other videos. Um, so let's click pink orange designs. Um, use double opt-in means that they have to um, opt-in through their email as well, but we're going to untick that for now. If you do still end up getting a lot of spam bots, even with Honeypot enabled, it's worthwhile coming in and just clicking that, and it just prevents a lot of um, bots from filling out your forms. It may decrease your um, audience conversion rate because it makes it it's that one extra step for your clients to do to fill out a form. Then click Next. Now we'll have for the MailChimp to work, we'll have to allocate all of these fields uh, that we've just made into the MailChimp fields here. So um, let's have a look at first name. We can allocate that to there. Um, last name, we've got that as well. We've got message. And we have also got GDPR. Now, these are the only fields we've, we've used, so uh, we don't need to fill out the other ones. Um, if you have a formulator field that you can't see on MailChimp, you will have to allocate it or it won't work. So let's look at how to create a, an additional field. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a new field at the bottom here, um, and we'll see how that appears on the form. So, so when you're logged in, come to Audience tags, and then we're going to go settings, audience fields, and let's add a new field. Um, and we're going to call this uh, birthday. So we've added that. And let's rename this birthday. Um, you can even change the, uh, 
of date format. So in the UK, we have day first and then month. And then if you want it to be a mandatory field, you can click the box, but it's a birthday one, so we don't need that. So let's untick it and then click Save Changes. Now, when we come into MailChimp again, let's hit Refresh, Integration, Activate App. We've allocated our audience. We can see now birthday is at the bottom here to allocate. So if we did have birthday on the form, um, we could select it there. So let's just quickly fill out forms. So first name and last name filled out, as well as message. And GDPR was the last thing on that list. Hit save. And then update. So that's how you set up Formulator. Now let's look at how we mount it to the page. So we're going to come to pages and we're going to add new page. And let's just put contact us page. Uh, content layout, we're going to do full width. And we're going to disable the titles. Now you can only do that if you've installed um, Ocean WP Extra. Um, so if you are using the Ocean WP theme, I recommend you install Ocean WP Extra. Um, and then let's click Publish. And then we're going to Preview, Open a New Tab. So we've got our blank page here. Now let's head back to Formanator. And then on the Contact Us page, we're going to select the little gear icon and copy short code. So now back on this page, let's edit page. And let's add a block and we're going to search for short code. Paste in the short code from Formanator, click update and then click preview. And there's our quick and simple form. So that's how you set up a form with Formulator.